Welcome back you legends, I'm Dr. Ken, let's get right into this video. This week is going to be insane, so let's get right into it. The S&P 500 today was up 1.4%, the Nasdaq 1.26%, and the Dow 1.58%. So that's interesting, we had a rally today, but it was led by the Dow Jones. Before even I look at the different sectors, I will be confident that the rally was led by defensive sectors. So let's take a look at the different sectors. Leading was energy, followed by tech, utilities, industrials, and financials. Lagging were basic materials, consumer cyclicals, and communication services. Normally, in a rally, I would like to see communication services, cyclicals, and tech leading with energy, utilities, and defensives lagging. That would indicate a risk on move, which means that uh, market participants are taking on more risk, they're buying stocks and they're dumping bonds. What we are seeing though is the opposite. We're seeing rotation into defensive sectors like utilities, like industrials and healthcare. And we're seeing the riskier assets, including cyclicals, which are uh, consumer discretionary companies, as well as communication services lagging. So this is a defensive rally heading into CPI and that makes Total sense, if we look at the daily chart for the S&P 500, we are still trading within this uh, range. This support line down here has held consistently since we bottomed in October. We tagged it and we continued to rally. We actually broke that support line Friday, which was extremely bearish, but we're now seeing a bounce back up. We're now touching or closing even above the 20-day moving average on the S&P 500, heading into a critical, critical event, and that's CPI tomorrow. We'll get the core inflation rate as well as um, the headline inflation rate tomorrow. And on Wednesday, we'll get the FOMC um, interest rate decision as well as projections for the terminal rate. Now, depending on what we see from CPI tomorrow, we could either get a massive, massive soul crushing crash, or we could get one final, final dead cap bounce before uh, the crash father, Jay Powell, comes back and crushes the market on Wednesday. Well, why am I saying that? Well, it's because the Fed is telling us what they're going to do. And they did that uh, last week through the Wall Street Journal, Nick Timoros, who reported that the um, Fed is now actually looking to continue to raise rates in January as well as February by 25 basis points. This contradicts earlier reports that the Fed was actually going to uh, stop raising rates after the December meeting in a couple of days and that, and that the 50 basis point rate hike coming up in a couple of days would be the last. Now we're hearing the Fed saying, no, we will continue to raise rates into uh, next year, but at a slower rate. And unfortunately, that means even uh, a, a longer rate hiking cycle, which means even lower stock market valuations and even more pressure on um, the economy, suffocating the economy. Now let's take a quick look at the stock market map. We can see green all over the place, specifically in utilities, as well as industrials, things like railroads, as well as um, logistics and freight. And then we have energy rallying, as well as uh, payment services like Visa and MasterCard, some tech companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Microsoft, Apple seeing some, uh, somewhat of a muted action today. Communication services really suffering with Netflix selling off, Meta selling off, Google basically flat. And then we had a lone um, red company here in consumer cyclicals, Tesla selling off by 6%. It just, it just seems like Tesla cannot get a break. It's been uh, selling off consistently and we've now uh, I made a new low on the daily chart, which is uh, extremely bearish. Now let's go and take a look at the triple Qs. The triple Qs have been trading uh, in a range for now nearly a month. So if you actually went long here, or if you went short here, you will have made no money uh, in the last three weeks, which is really frustrating, right? Because we are used to these violent, violent swings. 
and we're not getting those. We're seeing somewhat of a muted action throughout the last three weeks. We do have two resistance lines that I want to show you. Uh, the first is this dark red resistance line, and it connects the top in December as well as the top in August. Then we have another resistance line which connects the top in December, the top in April, as well as the top that we had um, late uh, January, excuse me, late November, just a couple of weeks ago. And we could see something interesting, something that looks like this. One final push to the upside, another rejection at the uh, resistance line. Same thing here with the S&P 500. One final push to the upside, get rejected here at the resistance line, as well as this, uh, as well as this prior support line for this ascending wedge. This is an ascending wedge. And um, this acted as a, a very strong support line until we broke it last week. And uh, that, uh, as soon as that happened, really, we had this bearish crossover and all of our medium term and longer term indicators switched to being bearish. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm anticipating either one final push tomorrow and then a sell off on Wednesday or simply a sell off starting tomorrow on CPI. We don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, actually, I did enter a very short term, very high risk, high reward uh, short position today on a specific company. By the way, guys, I do share all of my trades and investments in real time in the trading community. And I made a massive, massive, massive um, change to my investment portfolio last week. Again, if you're interested, check out the link in the description below to join our trading community. It's where I post my daily intramarket, pre-market, as well as post-market uh, analysis, as well as, again, all of my trades uh, my charts. I have a library of all of my charts that you see in the videos in the trading community where you can click on any chart that you want and you'll uh, see a live version of that chart as well as my weekly expected moves, which I post every single week. So again, check out the link in the description. If you are interested, it's about $35 a month. If you go for the annual membership, and you get access to all of my trading activity as well as all of my work. Now let's take a look at the Dow Jones. Again, the Dow Jones is leading again after showing relative weakness last week. It is now leading again, which again means rotation into defensives. I do suspect that this rally will very likely fail in the Dow Jones. Let's take a look at another index that I like to watch and it's the SMH, the Semiconductors Index. And if you notice, guys, we did have this double top formation with a significant negative divergence on the PPO, putting in a lower high. And we are now approaching, putting in one final top again, forming a triple top formation again with another negative divergence. And in my opinion, it's, it's just the market giving you the opportunity to short here, here, and perhaps one more time tomorrow as 2022 comes to an end and we enter uh, 2023, which is going to be all about company earnings, recession, weak growth. And um, really, I expect 2023 to be significantly worse for the stock market than 2022. Despite this massive sell-off uh, this year, I actually expect 2023 to be significantly worse Let's take a look at another chart. This is the triple Qs divided by the S&P 500. And we are now forming a very clear and obvious bear pennant. This is a very obvious bear pennant to my eye. Um, we had this double bottom, we rallied, and then we failed to make a new high. And that's very significant. We made a new high on the S&P, then we, we failed to make a new high on the uh, ratio chart, and that was a bearish development. Soon after that, we actually sold off. We are still maintaining this support line, but this support line will likely break as soon as Wednesday on a waterfall style sell off that lasts for weeks and weeks and weeks. Let's take a look at another chart. This is the uh, Russell 2000 divided by the SMP 500. This is the weekly chart and two significant developments. One, we have a bearish crossover on the PPO. The second development is this. Look at this. We formed this bearish pennant, we broke out, and then we broke down. This is so, so, so bad. These uh, false breaks produce significant bearish uh, sentiment in the market. When you see something like this, the exact same thing happened last year. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. 
and it was right over here. If you notice, guys, the Russell 2000 was trading in a sideways channel throughout 2021. Then we had this breakout, and that breakout failed. And when that breakout failed, it produced significant bearish sentiment. We had a waterfall style sell off. We made a new low on a closing basis relative to the uh, prior year. We had one uh, more push to the upside. Again, it failed at the 50 day, and we had another waters uh, fall style sell off. And so I'm seeing the exact same thing happening, but on the weekly chart, which means a, an even longer term, more uh, long lasting sell off weakness in the uh, small caps which are a great barometer for risk on or risk off in the market. That is whether market participants are looking to take risk off the table or add risk to their portfolios. And we're now seeing risk being taken off the table across the board in the, uh, in the stock market. On the daily chart for the Russell, again, look at this very, very clean double top formation with a negative divergence. Again, we could see one final push to the upside, a failure at the 20 day moving average and a continuation of the sell off to the downside to fill this gap Boom, right here at 175. We will likely see even deeper sell offs than that if we see uh, a break to the downside on Wednesday or tomorrow off uh, the CPI. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now, interestingly, the VIX is actually slightly up on the day despite this massive, massive, massive rally in the S&P 500. And it just indicates um, extreme nervousness in the, uh, in the stock market. We do have this double bottom formation with a slightly higher low on the PPO for the, um, for the VIX, which is one of the hallmarks for the VIX, right? where we have a double top with a higher high on the day and a lower uh, high on the PPO that would indicate um, a bottom. We did have a bottom there. In fact, uh, the VIX is what allowed us to catch this bottom on October 13th. And we're now seeing the opposite, right? We're seeing higher high on the S&P 500 and a lower high on the VIX, but a higher low uh, on the PPO, indicating again that bearishness is back in the market. We're now seeing somewhat of a bull flag that is just waiting, waiting to break to the uh, to the upside. Um, and again, guys, remember the VIX. When the VIX moves to the upside, the stock market just goes tanking because it just measures the fear in the market, and it's a proxy for how expensive uh, put options specifically in the market, options in general, but put options uh, specifically, which are the um, most common way uh, to hedge portfolios. So when you see the VIX move up, it just means more and more people are afraid, more and more people are buying hedge uh, hedges against their positions, more and more people are actually turning bearish. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones. Up top is the Dow Jones Industrials. Down below is the Dow Jones Transports. And we did have this very, very long uh, lasting uh, negative divergence where the S&P, excuse me, where the Dow Jones Industrials made a new high. The Dow Transports failed to make a new high. And based on Dow theory, this means that the trend is going to change and it's going to change to the downside. And that's what happened we saw that happen last week with this massive sell-off. We're now seeing this uh, dead cat bounce in the uh, Dow Jones uh, transports as well as the S&P, the triple Qs, a bunch of uh, indices. And uh, uh, again, this uh, dead cat bounce will likely fail as soon as Wednesday, if not tomorrow. We'll see what happens with CPI. Another chart that I want to take a look at is the smart money. Uh, this is HYG up top. Uh, and the money S&P 500 down below. We did have this positive divergence between the S&P and the uh, HYG, where the HYG made a new high, excuse me, a higher low, while the S&P made a lower low. Uh, this divergence did resolve to the upside in a very anemic rally, a very uh, anemic recovery. And again, it just does not look good. The market looks very, very sick at this point. We might get again one final push to the upside tomorrow. We might not. If we do get one, I'll just be adding more and more to my short pos uh, positions. And uh, it would just be an opportunity to exit any of your long positions if you have any. Because if we take a look at the um, summation index, the McClellan volume summation index down here, if you notice, guys, every single time where we have a uh, cross down on this summation index, we do tend to see somewhat of an anemic uh, attempt uh, at recovery, one final push to the upside that always, always fails. 
and we are now in the midst of this uh, attempted recovery and again it will likely fail as soon as Wednesday if not tomorrow Another chart that I want to look at is XLY divided by XLP, consumer discretionary divided by consumer staples. And uh, we are now clearly, clearly forming a uh, descending triangle and uh, with successive lower highs. We could see one final push to the upside tomorrow that then fails Wednesday and we finally see these lows broken. And when those lows break all hell will break loose. Let's take a look at another chart. This is DXY, the dollar index. We have this very obvious descending wedge. We are now flirting with the um, resistance line of this descending wedge. Uh, a hot CPI number tomorrow will send the dollar index skyrocketing, breaking out of this descending wedge and beginning a new uptrend in the dollar, crushing the stock market, crushing equities. Let's take a look at another chart. This is the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield has now successfully crossed over. Um, we do now have a bullish crossover on uh, the 10-year yield. It will likely see a rally to the upside if CPI is hot and if the Fed signals more rate hikes to come. Uh, this uh, rally will at least send us back up to 3.9% to hit this 50 day moving average that again will crush the stock market. Let's take a look at another chart up top is the percent of stocks in the S&P 500 trading above their 50 day moving average and in blue and black is the S&P 500. What do you notice? Look at this. We are now um, flirting with the um, bottom of this uh, Bollinger Band. We are now trading below the 20 day moving average. And we saw this recovery. We are now at the exact same spot that we were uh, back here in uh, August, late August. So again, we could see one final push to the upside and a failure uh, Wednesday, or we could just start to sell off as soon as tomorrow. We don't know. Again, if we rally tomorrow, I will only be adding to my short positions. Another chart that I want to look at is this. This is one of my newer indicators. This is the PC, the put to call ratio. I was actually waiting for a retest of this support line to go short. We never had a retest. The S&P 500 rallied, made a new high. This ratio chart uh, made a higher low versus uh, this low here. And we just did not look back. We have now broken uh, above this uh, resistance line. Again, indicating that we are starting a new downtrend, a new downtrend that will last at least for a couple of months. Let's take a look at the fear and greed index. We are now sitting at greed 59. And in terms of market momentum, market momentum has been flat. We've been trading above the 125 day moving average, flat. Stock price strength has now topped and it's flattening or perhaps even going down. Breadth is collapsing. We're seeing that in this chart right here, guys. It is now moving down. And just look at that. Every single time where we hit this um, extreme of 90, the market has topped. Boom, it topped here, it topped here. And we just saw massive, massive, massive sell offs ensue after that. So, again, if you haven't uh, shorted the market, if you hadn't, if you haven't exited the market just yet, you will still have an opportunity to go short uh, this week. But perhaps that window will close as soon as tomorrow. So, again, guys, check out the link in the description to join our trading community. I I am now uh, sharing a lot of trade uh, setups, a lot of uh, trade ideas, some of which I expect to net over five hundred percent by March, and they're relatively safe uh, safe uh, trades using things like put debit spreads. Again, put to call ratio, it has now moved up. It is now flagging. Again, does not look pretty. We will likely move back up above one, significantly above one. In fact, market volatility, the VIX is now rallying towards the 50-day uh, moving average. We will likely see the VIX cross uh, over uh, above the 50-day moving average as soon as this week, if not the next week. Safe haven demand is now a growing right bonds are now outperforming stocks as stocks weaken and junk uh, and junk bond demand is now collapsing as more and more uh, investors turn to investment grade bonds as a safer investment versus junk bonds let's take a look at this this is um stock market valuation based on the pe ratio we are now 50 percent above the, the the historical average which means that even if earnings do not go down and if we simply see uh, the pe ratio go back to its historical average that would indicate a 50 percent decline from the current levels that would put the s p 500 
at $200. The, the SPY would go down to $200. Now, my longer term target, everybody, is actually around 250 by September of next year, September, October of next year. I do expect the SMB to go to $250 to revisit the pandemic lows. I don't know if we'll go uh, much lower than that, but that's my target. My target by March is between 320 and uh, 300 by March. And by September, I expect the market to uh, have sold back down to 250 on the S&P. And that will be the bottom, in my opinion. And the market will start to see uh, a significant recovery after that. Let's take a look at the economic calendar tomorrow. Again, we'll have inflation come out uh, just before the market open at 8.30 a.m. Uh, now, I am bearish on CPI because the market... Uh, really did not like the PPI report that came out uh, Friday. If you notice, we did have this weak, weak looking uh, tombstone candle on Friday. And now some, somehow, for some reason, the market is rallying ahead of uh, CPI. That's always been a very bad sign, right? We don't like to see the market rallying ahead of key events like CPI. Because if you notice, guys, the last CPI, the market saw massive sell-offs ahead of the CPI and then we rallied. And if you notice back here, guys, the market actually rallied ahead of CPI and then it came crashing down. So a rally ahead of CPI is not good. And this is somewhat of a rally. It's an anemic rally, a bear flag looking rally, but it's a rally nonetheless. And I hate seeing the market being optimistic ahead of key events like tomorrow. It just makes me even more bearish. After that, everybody, Wednesday, we'll have the FOMC um, uh uh, meeting, the Fed interest rate decision, as well as um, the economic projections for next year for the terminal rate, as well as the uh, press conference at 2.30 Eastern time. Thursday, we'll have retail sales and initial jobless claims. Friday, uh, the manufacturing PMI. But really, nothing uh, matters uh, this week except for CPI tomorrow and, of course, FOMC, the FOMC meeting uh, the day after on Wednesday. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, wow!